Hi, it's Brian. Welcome to the Awards Contender. And today we are talking Tarzan at the Oscars, Disney's Tarzan. And I'm very excited to welcome Andrew Campbell back today to talk about not only this wonderful animated film from 1999, 25 years ago, but also Disney animation at the Oscars in the 90s. Pretty fascinating. And Tarzan, in a way, ended their remarkable run at the Oscars between 1990 and 2000. How are we doing, Andrew? I'm doing great. Uh, I love Tarzan, so I'm going to love this conversation. Uh, it's a very appreciated movie, I think, these days with the soundtrack and Phil Collins. So I am hyped to talk about this movie because it's, it's one of the best Disney movies for sure. Yeah, this is a fantastic one. It really was the last great Disney animated feature non-Pixar movie that we got for a while. I know there's a lot of love for like Emperor's New Groove, which came after this. And that's a really fun movie. I really enjoy that so one. Good. And Lilo and Stitch. But like the non-Pixar Disney animated features from like 2000 to the early 2010s. Not a great run. There are a couple standouts there, but I don't know if you've seen Home on the Range. Oh uh, yeah, with uh, Roseanne <laughs> Barr is the voice of a cow. I mean, <laughs> like, I, I they, think I've seen it once. They hit some speed bumps and not all of these films got into the Oscars. Before we get into Tarzan, I did want to just touch on a little bit of the Oscar history of Disney animation in the 90s. Like in the 70s and 80s, Andrew, most of their films don't even get into the Oscars, like maybe a song nomination here and there. But then everything changes with The Little Mermaid. That comes out at the end of 89. It gets uh, three Oscar nominations, two in song and one in score. It wins best score and original song for Under the Sea. So that was a good start. And then we get to Beauty and the Beast, which in early 1992, Andrew, this film becomes the first animated feature in history to be nominated for Best Picture at the Oscars. But Beauty and the Beast was such a milestone movie. Everybody loved it. It came out at the end of the year, huge box office hits. It was It's just one of their essential films, and so it makes sense to me why that happens. But it didn't yeah. win Best Picture. It went to this other movie called The Silence of the Lambs, which is like one of the best Never heard winners of it. ever. <laughs> it's yeah. like one of the best wins ever in that category. Uh, so it had to just win Best Score again, and it won Best Original Song for Beauty and the Beast, the title song. And then the That's next great. year, Aladdin comes out. Aladdin wins Score and Best Song for A Whole New World. And then The Lion King gets into some categories, wins Best Original Song for Can You Feel the Love Tonight and Score. And then Pocahontas comes out in 95. That wins Best Original Song for Colors of the Wind and Best Score. Like, they had a run there from 1990 to 1996 of the Oscars. Like, in those two categories, song and score, forget about it. <laughs> it was going to a Disney movie. But then after Pocahontas, like... And I got to live this in real time, Andrew. You were too young. <laughs> but like, so I go, I mean, one of the first movies I see in a theater is The Little Mermaid. I'm five years old. And then I go to Beauty and the Beast. I'm like seven. And so I'm growing up with these movies, this renaissance for Disney animation. It was spectacular. I mean, Aladdin, I saw that movie five times in the theater. I loved wow. it. At age eight, like that movie was my jam. I mean, it's so <laughs> funny. Robin Williams is the genie. Oh, I went back. Phenomenal. A couple of weeks ago by, Mom, can I go back and see Aladdin? So then The Lion King was just phenomenal. I saw that three or four times. And then, like, Pocahontas was fine. Like, I liked it, but I didn't like it like the, uh, the last four films. Yeah. And then The Hunchback of Notre Dame and Hercules and Mulan. As I was getting a little older, becoming more of a teenager, I was falling more out of love with these Disney movies. I think Oscar reflected the lack of passion from audiences at the time, at least for Hunchback of Notre Dame and Hercules and Mulan, because we have everything from Little Mermaid to Pocahontas wins a couple of prizes at the Oscars. But then Hunchback only gets into score, does not get a song nomination, does not win score. And then Hercules gets one nomination for song. That does not win. Weirdly, that doesn't get into score. But the Hunchback score got in. 
And the only mm. nomination for Mulan is score. So, like, they're giving each of these films something, but the Oscars, like, they're not really going for these three Disney animated features. But then we get to Tarzan in 1999, and I've always felt this was a major return to form for Disney animation. I, I, I adore Tarzan. Tarzan is definitely one of the definitely top Disney movies. I think it's also a different... There's a different formula to it as well than the other movies, Mus music, music wise. Yeah, it's interesting in that throughout mm -hmm. most of these Disney animated films of the Renaissance era, they are very much movie musicals. They stop the story to sing and dance. And there's like a lot of that in these movies. And, and then we get to Tarzan. And it was an interesting experience watching that movie for the first time because it has songs in it. But Tarzan and Jane are not singing. Like, we're hearing Phil Collins sing, right? Sing these songs. And it's not necessarily like the characters are singing them. So that was something new and different for Disney. It was like we were entering a new era of the animated movie musical. I think it would also, it would make sense for Tarzan to stop and start singing. I just think that doesn't really make, that would make <laughs> sense for, I guess, his character overall. Um, like, I was like, I just can't picture it. I mean, really, the only musical number they have is the where they trash the camp and they do the. And it's not even um, it's not even like singing. It's like more so sound and like actions, and um, they don't you know stop and sing a song. Uh, but I think having you know Phil Collins' voice kind of be the whole theme for the movie is something Disney had it done. But Phil Collins, I mean, he's almost the voice of the movie. And so I think when people think of Tarzan, they think Phil Collins because he did it. So I think Tarzan was a return to form because it's a great story, very entertaining. The animation in Tarzan is beautiful to look at. And then that soundtrack is amazing. So Tarzan was going to get into the Oscars, like that was gonna happen. I don't know if everybody expected it to necessarily win, but thankfully it did, Andrew, because it got into one category, original song. Phil Collins won the Oscar for You'll Be In My Heart from Tarzan. What do we think of that win and that song? Uh, it's, it's a beautiful song, and I think this wraps up the relationship between Z Tarzan and his adoptive mother, uh, Phil Collins' performance. I mean, his, his performance of that song is beautiful, and that is, when I think of the movie, that is the song that comes to mind at first, always. In original song for Disney animated features around this time, the win usually goes for the more dramatic song. Beauty and the Beast wins over Be Our Guest. Lion King, they go with Can You Feel the Love Tonight? Like that makes sense. Like the more prestige kind of dramatic song wins. That was the case here for Tarzan. You'll be in my heart. Because I do feel like there are at least three great songs in that movie they could have nominated that could have won. Like instead of You'll Be in My Heart. But this is like the quieter, more dramatic song. And so that's why I think this won. There are some bangers in this category. Music of the Heart by Diane Warren from the Meryl Streep movie, Music of the Heart. That's mm -hmm. kind of like a nonsense <laughs> nomination. But I do like Blame Canada from South Park, Bigger, Longer, and Uncut, which Robin Williams performed at the Oscars that year. Oh. Kind of a cool one-off nomination for a South Park movie. Uh, the two I love here are Save Me from Magnolia. One of my favorite movies of all time is Paul Thomas Anderson's Magnolia and Save Me is just a beautiful song by Amy Mann that was never going to win. They didn't really love Magnolia at the Oscars. For me, even though I love this win, my vote would have gone to When She Loved Me from Toy Story 2. That, I think, is the better song. And Sarah McLaughlin's like, her voice, mm. that song is, like, the perfect blending of artist to song. And then the scene in the movie is so devastating. When She Loved Me from Toy Story 2 would have gotten my vote here. I think still for me, You'll Be My Heart would still win for me. I do, gosh, I, that scene, though, in Toy Story 2, back in, like, when she gets left at the little truck stop and she's underneath the bed and sees times goes by... Oh, that was absolutely heartbreaking. It does surprise me a little bit that Tarzan, it did very well that summer. People loved it. That at the Oscars in early 2000, it only gets that one nomination for original song. 
why didn't Tarzan get into score? Like the score of the movie is also fantastic by one of my favorites, Mark Mancina, who's done great work throughout the decades. He scored Speed, which is one of my favorite scores ever, at least of an action movie. He did not get nominated for that. I looked this morning, Mancina has never gotten an Oscar nomination and he's done some Disney films. After this, he did, he did the score to Moana. That did not get into score. Wow. And yeah, and he did some great stuff in the 2000s. I'm like, like if there was one film he should have gotten an Oscar nomination for, it would have been Tarzan, which everybody loved and appreciated at the time. And I mean, original score has all like very serious live action dramas like yeah. Angela's Ashes, The Talented Mr. Ripley, The Cider House Rules, American Beauty. The winner is this kind of obscure film called The Red Violin, which I have still never seen. I'm, I'm meaning to one of these. Maybe this year for his 25th anniversary, I'll take a look. But like, <laughs> I don't know, maybe like by early 2000, Academy members were like, okay, enough of the Disney stuff in score. <laughs> Let's go with more prestige dramas and things. But Tarzan should be here for score. I love that score of the movie. I, I totally agree. I that's that's very surprising to me that it wasn't nominated for, for best score. Cause yeah, it's it's beautiful and it's it's wonderful. I mean, I, I mean most of the score I believe was also just, you know, the melody of you'll be in my heart. So that I feel like, you know, those even kind of go hand in hand. Oh, I didn't even think of that. I mean, maybe you're right. Maybe part of the reason the Tarzan score isn't nominated is that a lot of the score does stem from the songs. Maybe yeah. that played a role. I didn't even think of that. <laughs> Maybe we, I mean, it, maybe we cracked the code. <laughs> so it's too bad that he didn't get into score, but I love that Tarzan has an Oscar win in yeah. this very great year for movies, 1999. Cher presented Best Original Song, Andrew. She gave the gold trophy to Phil Collins, who says something interesting at the start of his speech, Andrew. He says, now I can finally move on with my life. This has been hell. Now my life can go on, I think. Boy. It's been hell, I tell you. That's how he starts to speak. <laughs> what? Which I'm like, what is he referring to there? I, I'm thinking Phil Collins, who's not really in the movie world, right? Like this was his first big advocate for foray it. into like, like cinema, like working on Tarzan. I'm sure the process of Tarzan was hard work. And then, like, he has to be a part of, like, the machine of Oscar season. Like, he's nominated for this movie. I think that's what he's referring to. Like, those two months or whatever, like, of going to parties and schmoozing and all of that stuff yeah. that, you know, does play a role in winning an Academy Award. I think that's what he might be referring to. But then the rest of his speech is very lovely. He thanks his family and stuff. But it's a funny opening. He's like, oh, God, now I can finally move on. <laughs> It's I maybe it's just a very awkward joke, but it, that kind of reminds me of <laughs> the Daniels and with uh, everything everywhere all at once. I remember when they when the Oscars were over, they're like we were like we're happy it's over because like we it was like it's all we could talk about for over a year. Like yeah, I would kind of get tired of you have to talk about the same movie you did for a full year. It, it can get quite exhausting, I guess. Uh, and so I guess I hope I'm assuming that's what he meant. I would not say that in a Oscar speech. Uh, that's more of like a comment, you know, when you're at a party, you're like, oh, thank God. Let's go on to, let's talk about our other projects now. Uh, that's really awkward. It's, I don't know, I, I wouldn't have said it, but thank you, Phil Collins, though. You gave us one of the best soundtracks of all time. Oh yeah, I think it's just not even Disney. I think one of the best soundtracks, like movie soundtracks yeah. ever is Tarzan. I mean, I don't know if it yeah. happened in the top 10, but it'd be in the top 30 to 40 for sure. Like that is, yeah. that is a soundtrack that means a lot to a lot of people. So I don't know how many people think the Renaissance era for Disney animation ends with Tarzan, but I've always felt that even though maybe some people don't love Hunchback and Hercules and Mulan, I feel like Tarzan was the rightful kind of end to that decade of astonishing Disney animation filmmaking. And it makes me happy that at the Oscars, we had another one of their films rewarded in Tarzan because, Andrew, it's kind of insane. Take out Pixar, the next Disney animated film to win an Oscar is 14 years later, Frozen. That That is amazing, the thing. I mean, maybe it's because, I don't know, Pixar was killing it, though, in those like, 2000s. Yeah. I mean, 
but like in song and score, like Disney animated movies are not getting in there. Like not again, non Pixar stuff. Pixar movies are getting in. So the Oscars a lot more. Yeah. It's weird to think that after Tarzan for a non Pixar Disney animated movie, it takes 14 years till Frozen, which wins animated feature and song for Let It Go. Uh, so as we reach the end here, Andrew, uh, any final thoughts about Tarzan on its 25th anniversary? Like, what are your final thoughts about this great Disney animated movie? Uh, yeah, I think Tarzan has aged beautifully. I think what I love about really all these Disney movies itself is that the people who they they were raised on these, you know, got people my age and your age as well. Now that they're having kids, they also get to revisit these movies. I think Tarzan... It's definitely one of those movies that like is adult, like millennials love it so much and they can share it with their kids. And no, I think it's going to keep going and going. And I feel like when we think of the Disney Renaissance era of animation, we immediately go to Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin mm -hmm. and the Lion King. But I do put Tarzan in there. I think it's yeah. that good. It holds up extremely well. The music, the animation, that Oscar win for best original song is a great one. You'll be mm -hmm. in my hearts. And I just think if you haven't seen Tarzan in a while, go check it out. It is a great piece of Disney animation. Mm -hmm.